feeling this is going to be a long video. But let's get into it. Today I'm going to be talking about my 2021 empties. It is currently January 4th and I can I finished a couple skincare products so that's why I wanted to wait. It's just kind of an eclectic empties video. This is the Garnier uh, Fructis Invisible Dry Shampoo Fashion Volumize Melantini Instant Absorbed Oil No Visible Residue. I really like this. I think that it actually doesn't leave white cast because like my hair is fairly dark and like unless I use like a concentrated amount in a very small area it really doesn't leave a residue. Um, I think this is like my third one. Ever since Garnier went cruelty free I've been trying out their line and I really like it. I think this is probably my favorite cruelty free dry shampoo because for a while I was using Batiste because I thought it was cruelty free but it's not so I'm glad that this finally is because now I have a solid dry shampoo to use. Continuing on with sprays because I have quite a few. This is the Tarte Maracuja Mist Setting Spray. I think it's really basic. <laughs> I mean, it's an aerosol can. I got this in a boxy charm. Other than that, I wouldn't have gotten it. I don't buy setting sprays myself. I just kind of get them. I know I, I take that back. I do buy the fourth way one, but I'll get to that in a second. That's different though. But as far as like makeup setting mist, I really haven't bought any since like 2017. So I really don't know what I like. I just use whatever I get my hands on. And that was the deal with this. I mm, don't care about it. This is what I was talking about earlier. This is the 4th Way Beauty Freshest <laughs> This is the 4th Way Beauty Fresh AF Energizing Mist. It's like $10 and I was like, oh yeah, well I like it. It's just $10, you know, whatever. My dad's like, you're paying $10 for water. <laughs> and I'm like, no dad, it's skincare. But really, the reason why I like this so much is because the mist is really nice for a $10 spray. There are some myths that like spit at you, like the Urban Decay always spat at me. For that reason, I like keeping around the bottles so I can refill them with water and use them to revive my hair whenever I want it to be curly that I should have done today so my hair wouldn't look so bad. <laughs> but yeah, I, I think it's a decent mist and I like the smell. I like the ingredients. I don't think it has hyaluronic acid, which we'll get into later about my feelings about hyaluronic acid but yeah I think it's a I think it's a really good spray. Continuing on with sprays, UT had a pop-up shop with Ipsy uh, right on the street corner in um, Austin from the tower and like you could see the capital that area. Of course I waited 45 minutes in line to get free skincare. <laughs> um, and this was one of the booths that stood there and they gave me some stuff. And uh, this is the Replenix Sensitive Soothing Antioxidant Mists Medical Grade with Witch Hazel, Chamomile Extract, and Green Tea, and White Tea. It's cruelty free, gluten free, paraben free, fragrance free. I think this was pretty good. However, I have no real attachment to this because it is a spray. I think it did make my skin feel great, but I used it as a setting spray because I really skincare sprays and setting sprays, what's the difference really? There is a difference between makeup sprays and skincare sprays, but I would just spray this on after my skincare before I was going in with my foundation. I like it, I don't think I would necessarily buy it, but it is good. Continuing on with 4th Ray Beauty, I have the Keep Clear Clarifying Tonic. I think I like this. However, I don't notice a lot of results with it. I think it's really nice and I would buy it again because this is like my third I think but again I don't really I am just now getting back into toners I will probably buy this after I finish the one that I'm using right now that I wanted to try I don't know how I feel about this I mean I've repurchased it and I think it's nice but I don't know how effective it is um, I had whenever 4th Ray Beauty launched I bought the entire skincare line um, and this was one of the original products, and you'll see some other products here that are part of the original line that I tried out. I think in like fall 2018 I tried them out. So some of these I've been using for a long time. I just don't know how effective it is for me and my skin because like 
I think it has witch hazel in it. I don't know how my skin really likes witch hazel. I mean, my best friend, she, like, her skin loves witch hazel, but for me, I've never really noticed a significant difference. Like, I have some other ingredients I'm going to be talking about today, so we'll get into that later. This is the Polish Choice Exfoliate uh, Skin Perfecting 2% BHA Liquid Exfoliate with Salicylic Acid. God dang. Their frequency on their ads on YouTube is too much. Every time I see the ad for this, I get so pissed off. And it's a great ad. Like, whenever I first started seeing like, it popping up in, like, March, I was like, oh, it's a good ad. I'll keep watching it because, like, whenever you watch ads on YouTube, it, it, it just pretty much the YouTubers so they can make more money. So I was like, okay, it's, like, not a bad ad. I'll continue watching it. Oh, my God. They won't stop playing this ad. It's on every single video I'm watching. <laughs> and I'm like, I get it. It's great. I like it. But by the time I've seen the ad like a hundred times, I was like, okay, I just want to get rid of this because I got it in a boxy charm and decent deal. I mean, it's not, ex it's not like uber expensive, but it's not cheap. And every time I would use it, I just get pissed off because of that stupid ad. And I'm an ad major, so I understand like the mechanics behind it. And I'm like, why are you being so dumb? Like, I understand I'm the target demographic, but like still, 20 times a day is too much. <laughs> so, but other than that, I really like this. Um, I think it's very effective. I would repurchase it. I have it in my Sephora card. I went to go buy it at the Sephora, but it was a JCPenney Sephora, so they didn't have everything. So I would probably try to buy it on sale. I think it's effective and I think it's good and I think the brand is good, but they need to work on their frequency. It's not working, guys. This is, oh, I don't know if I can pronounce this. Odachite, California. Odachite. I speak Italian, so I don't know. But this bottle is really nice and heavy. It came in a boxy charm. Um, this is the Blue Aura Turmeric and Holy Basil Cleansing Water. Um, so basically, like micellar water. I think this was okay. I can't really remember using it. I remember I used it just to use it up. <laughs> And that's kind of a lot of the things with the skincare. Like, I really don't care. And now I'm becoming more picky because I've realized what it is making my skin break out. I think that the ingredients are pretty nice. Like, they've got some good, good ingredients in here. And I would probably repurchase it. I have no idea how much it costs. But again, I don't notice a whole lot of difference with these like I do with my other in active ingredients that are more like prescriptions. <laughs> and I try to keep my skincare very basic other than the actives that I'm using for that night. Let's just run through these pretty quickly. These are the native deodorants in uh, sea salt and cedar. I decided to start purchasing natural deodorants in 2020 so I could, you know, during quarantine regulate my body and get, you know, the toxins out and, you know, because aluminum deodorant is not good for you over the long term and I use it whenever I'm wearing like tank tops, but that's about it. I really like Native. Uh, there's a lot of ads online and I, th I think they're justified. I think that a lot of the sponsorships, like I think these people genuinely like it because I noticed like my body reacts super well with the Native deodorants. I don't really notice like anything going on or some if something is like tell me but i i think that these are pretty nice and worth the hype let's get on to these because these i have gone through at least 10 of the skincare line i buy them in the set they're from fourth ray beauty they're the uh cleansing oil the bfd cleansing oil and the am to the pm gel cleanser i go through these probably every three months. I go through the oils quicker than I do the gels, but it's fine. I think I would finish one by the time I finished half, um, to be honest, So, but I just keep buying them in the set. I have used these since November 2018, whenever Fourth Ray Beauty first launched, and I must say, like, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Like, I really like double cleansing. I notice it has helped my skin a lot. I've used these before, during, and after Accutane, so I'm really kind of hesitant to start switching it up because, I mean, it's not broken. There's no hyaluronic acid in here. My skin really likes it. It breaks down 
breaks down my makeup really well, so I really, I will probably keep buying these for a pretty decent amount of time. Another item from 43 Beauty is the Laser Hater Spot Treatment. I have tried to like these, but I just don't. I feel gross when I sleep in them, and it just, I know it's supposed to be super concentrated in the active ingredient, but I prefer not to concentrate it in one spot. I just want something all over my face that, well, you'll see in a minute what I use <laughs> and have way too many of them. I just prefer like an all over active ingredient versus like spot treatments. Aside from the Peace Out stickers, those are really good. I used it on this and this looks like it's active but it's not. It's just scarred and it'll go over in a few days or weeks. I don't really care. Like scarring, it happens. It doesn't phase me. Um, I know it does for some people but I really don't care. Like I really have barely any active acne right now because I have been cutting out hyaluronic acid entirely. This I think had maybe salicylic acid concentrate and my skin does like salicylic acid but I have been using it for like 10 years so it's so my skin's kind of immune to it so I don't think I would repurchase this necessarily. Things I don't remember using up at all. This is the It Cosmetics by by Under Eye Cream. It probably has hyaluronic acid in it and if so it probably gave me little bumps Therefore, probably won't buy it again. This is the Bliss Drench and Quench Cream to Water Hydrator for All Day Moisture. If this has hyaluronic acid, not gonna buy it again. Um, I got I got a lot of the Bliss skincare line from a giveaway with my dorm, <laughs> my freshman year. So I don't I don't remember using this. This is the Milk Makeup Matcha Toner Stick. So, controversial that skincare isn't a stick. However, I did read online somewhere that this is meant for studio shoots under lighting. It's not going to be as active in a stick as it is in a cream and a pump. Um, that's how you're going to get the most active ingredients. Uh, this is the cooling water. I don't remember if it has hyaluronic acid in it, but I did like it on my skin. I just did notice that I was getting little bumps. And then this is the matcha toner. I think I like this. I don't think it has hyaluronic acid in it from what I remember looking at the ingredients. I don't know. I just kind of used it up. Like I tried, I bought these on the BoxyCharm sale. Like whenever they have like their exclusive sale that you can buy individual products. Because I really wanted to try them. I love the aesthetic of milk. I love their advertising. I have this thing about like <sighs> skin hair touching my skin. Like, <sighs> like it is... It's a stick, so at the end of the day, you're wiping it on your face and then putting it back on, and the next night you're wiping it on your face. So like, for me, like, with with my skin being so acne prone, like bacteria freaks me out. So I really was just trying to go through these. I like them, and I wish that I wasn't so paranoid about that, cause like, I can't even use like moisturizers that you have to dig into. Like I need to have some sort of lazy tube or a dropper. Like I was using a dropper to take it out and put it in my hand for a while. Like I just don't want my skin, like my hands touching my skincare before I put it on because I don't want there to be any bacteria. So that's the only reservation with this. Okay, so this was not cruelty free but I got it in a boxy charm. That's the reason why I ultimately stopped buying BoxyCharm because I kept getting non-cruelty-free items and they're just like, oh, well, we can't guarantee everything will be cruelty-free. Just stop collaborating with those brands. It's literally not that hard. Sure, they give you money, but like still, just don't. If you don't want to be aligned with that, then don't do it. I'm sure it's more complicated from that, but whatever. This is the Glam Glow Moisture Trip Omega Rich Moisturizer. I was using this to use it up. I will get on to my favorite moisturizer in a second, but I tried, if I have moisturizers that are not my favorite moisturizers, I've used that up before I can open a new one because I always buy the La La Retro on sale. And so I usually have it as a backup and then whenever I finish the one I'm using, if I have any other moisturizers, I use that up before I open the other one. 
that makes sense. If it has hyaluronic acid in it, it probably made me break out, but I really don't remember much of this. I think it smelled nice. I think it felt nice on my skin. Um, I think it moisturized it really well, but I'm just in love with the La La Retro from Drunk Elephant. Like, I, I just... <laughs> it, it is my jam. Like, it works really well for me. However, we'll just get into it. It's, it's, such, it's such a tragedy. Okay, so <laughs> this is my dilemma. I love the La La Retro. I have gone through at least seven, if not ten, of these. I have a backup in my apartment in Austin. I love these. Oh my god, I love these. So whenever I was going on Accutane, I obviously needed a good moisturizer. I asked my mother, I was like, hey, like... I've heard really good things about this. Do you mind if I try it? And she's like, yeah, sure. And <laughs> this is $60, okay? This is way too much money. But whenever I did try it, because I had little samples in here. I can show you. I had these little samples that I, like, collected because uh, I think they were point perks at Sephora one year. Um, and so I really wanted to try it because I heard such good things on YouTube. Once I had gone through all of these, I was like, Mom, can I please buy this? And because I was still in high school at the time whenever I first tried it. And she was like, yeah, sure. Like, if it's your skincare, like, we're already investing in it. Might as well make sure that you're using good ingredients and stuff like that. And this is started by a Texan woman. So, of course, I love that. They're owned by a parent company now, but still, it's cool whenever, you know, Texan women do their own stuff. And, okay, y'all gotta help me out here. It has sodium hyaluronate cross polymer. So, if you don't know, cross polymer means that it's synthetically created in a lab. And Drunk Elephant used synthetic ingredients because... Now, this is controversial, and people are in the comments and be like, no, 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 like, natural ingredients are better, blah, blah, blah. Okay, from my research, I have done, and, like, Jen Love and some other YouTubers that I really admire, they all say that natural isn't always better because sometimes synthetic ingredients are more compatible with your skin molecularly. So, if you have the original molecule of sodium hyaluronate and it's too large to penetrate the skin into the deeper layers then it's going to create problems on the surface so that's why i steer clear from most hyaluronic acid however this is a cross polymer I, I need to do more research because i know that my skin loves this every time i put it on my skin it's just like oh thank you like this is what we needed like and, like, my skin really loves it and feels well with it, but I know that I've been, I haven't been using this for, like, two weeks because I wanted to make sure that everything hyaluronic acid was get out. And plus, I'm, I ran out of it yesterday, and I have another moisturizer that I'm trying to use up. Like I said, I try to use them up before I use this. Anyways, this is a lot, this is way too much information. I love these. I don't want to stop using it because my skin loves it so much but if I start noticing breakouts then I will by the time I finish up the one I'm using because I'm using no hyaluronic acid right now and that's why my skin looks pretty decent in my opinion I just have scarring I want to love this completely and I've talked about this for four minutes <laughs> I'm sorry I love this I'll probably do a dedicated review one day okay so this is the uh, pharmacy Daily Greens Oil-Free Gel Moisturizer. If I'm not mistaken, it has hyaluronic acid. This was made exclusively for BoxyCharm. I liked this. The only thing about Pharmacy, and I will say the thing, same thing about this. This is the Very Cherry Clean Melt, uh, Makeup Melt Away Cleansing Balm by Pharmacy. It's limited edition and made exclusively for BoxyCharm. So the only thing about pharmacy, like, I think their ingredients are great, but the, the fragrance, man, the fragrance, I just, I can't do it. I love this cleansing balm, but the entire time I was putting it on my face, I'm like, oh my god, like, I'm gonna break out from this because the scent is so strong. I can guarantee you I can still smell it. 
yeah it's like very strong i want to love it I, I wish my skin wasn't so sensitive because i would totally rebuy this honestly i would probably rebuy it over the 4-3 beauty cleansing oil because it lasts a lot longer Haley o loves this stuff like she loves this stuff and i want to love it too but my skin is so sensitive so i would like to kind of maybe try it again in the future and then see how my skin reacts once I get my skin under control. Another thing that I have recently repurchased is the Ole Henriksen Truth Banana Bright Cream, eye cream. So I have this right now on my um, skincare box and I think this is probably... I've known I've gone through at least two more of these aside from the one that I'm using right now. So I really like this. It Oh my god, I was searching Sephora because I have been using other eye creams and then I never got around to buying this again. But I was, I'd finally gone through them or I gave them away because they had sodium hyaluronate in them. And um, this was the only one I could find on Sephora without sodium hyaluronate or hyaluronic acid or whatever. Like it was, oh my gosh. Like I understand, like eye creams need to be hydrating, but like. There's other ingredients that are hydrating, like, can we just get this ingredient out of the mainstream because it's driving me insane because I can't find anything I can use. Rant aside, I like this eye cream and it makes my skin feel really nice. I bought it for my dad and he really likes it. I think that I will continue to buy this. I don't remember why I stopped with him, like, getting the ones in the mail. I eye creams take forever for me to go through. Another eye cream from a brand that we just talked about is the Pharmacy Cheer Up Brightening Vitamin C Eye Cream with a Chirola Cherry. I don't know. This is made exclusively for BoxyCharm. I don't remember if it came in the same month as the cleanser or not. I don't know whether or not it has hyaluronic acid in it. I, I don't... Like, I remember using this stuff and I really liked it and I think that had it not been so fragranced, I would enjoy it more and not been so paranoid. But sometimes I do use their products to use them because I don't want them to go to waste. But I would definitely say I would buy this one over this one because I prefer the ingredients in this one and I know that my skin really likes it. Some more multiples that I have are the unseen sunscreen broad spectrum 40 from Supergoop. so if y'all don't know Supergoop is at least distributed in san antonio and i'm a texan girl so i love supporting texan brands i love what they've been doing so far i know i've gone through at least one more and then i have another one in my skincare box so it's a sunscreen that i remember to use this is just great overall i feel like it in a way mattifies my skin which is nice before I go in with foundation so yeah I really like these I was given to use up was this Glossier Future Dew Oil Serum Hybrid I have no idea the ingredients in these I was just kind of using it I think I would use it on my chest and my back because I was having bad back knee I would say that I would not buy this skin because in general I'm kind of wary with using oils like I'm using one oil right now and it's a hibiscus oil and it's good for like dark spots I don't think I would buy this I think Glossier skincare is really expensive and like I'm glad that I got to try it because this was my cousin's and then she asked me to use it so I don't know I don't think I would rebuy this this is the Atula skincare glow and get it cooling and brightening eye balm I don't think I would repurchase it because it is in the stick and I do like the effect that it gave me like the cooling effect is really nice and I did notice that my under eyes were really hydrated but it did leave like a little mm, blue cast kind of so like if you're going to bed that's fine and like if you're putting on makeup that's fine but like mm, I don't know I don't like how maybe I was applying too much but I don't like how it kind of gave a blue cast that was kind of weird. I have the Junk Elephant A Passioni Retinol Cream Reboot and Smooth. This is 1% retinol. I bought a skincare sample set from Junk Elephant to divide amongst my friends for Christmas, I think last year, and I wanted to keep this for myself and try it out. So I like I like retinols and I think they do well, but I'm not sure how I feel about non-medical grade on the shelf retinol. I don't know how effective it is. I know like Paula's Choice has some really good retinols, but 
For me personally, if you're going to use a retinol, please go to your dermatologist because it's a very intense ingredient and I want you to make sure that you're taking care of your skin. With all of the ingredients, please talk to your dermatologist. This is the Volition Snow Mushroom Water Serum. And I believe this is the same brand that my oil is from, the hibiscus oil for dark spots. It's got pretty good ingredients in here, except it has sodium hyaluronate. But for me personally, like there's other stuff that I like, and now that I know it has hyaluronic acid, I'm not gonna buy it again. So some controversial topics. We'll see how y'all are reacting in the comments, but I personally don't get a lot of hydration from the Tarte water cream. I feel like you put it on and you blend it out and then it's gone. That's for me personally. Like I know I have oily skin, so maybe somebody with dry skin feels differently, but this is so thin. Like it's literally like water. So if you like that, go for it but I need something a little bit more hydrating because the more hydrating my moisturizer is the less oily I get throughout the day does that make sense oily skin is dehydrated skin overcompensating and dry skin is also dehydrated but it just doesn't do anything so I don't know it just depends on your skin type I don't feel any attachment to this I don't really have any attachment to Tatcha I'm I can't imagine this not having hyaluronic acid in it. It's a no for me, dog. Another item from 4th Ray Beauty is this uh, oh, face milk. I can't find this on the website. I really wanted to repurchase it, but I can't find it. I noticed that my skin likes it. I have no idea if this particular one has hyaluronic acid because I know that the other ones do. So if this ever comes back and does not have hyaluronic acid, I would repurchase it with the cleansers because I do like 4th Ray Beauty skincare line for what it is. A lot of it's trendy ingredients, but if you're looking for like basic skincare, I think that's a good place to start because I do think that they use pretty well-known ingredients that are reliable and I know how ColourPop manufactures all their stuff. Like I went to the factory one time, so like I know that they I'm not putting just trash in there, but I do think it's all very trendy. So please make sure that you're looking at the ingredients and making sure that you're not just using it because it says watermelon. <laughs> Basically is what I'm trying to get at. Another scented ingredient is this Yinza Pumpkin Turmeric 2-in-1 Radiance Polishing Mask. Yinza actually had a booth at that Ipsy event I was talking about and I got a mini size of this and they were like, have you ever heard of Yinza? And I was like, yeah. And they were like, wait, really? Uh, because it's kind of a smaller, like, I think maybe Asian brand, Asian inspired brand. Perhaps this is, you know, just marketing for Asian skincare. I found a point where I was just using it to use it. I, in general, don't like physical exfoliants because it aggravates my skin. I think this is a nice face mask, but I have just kind of cut them out completely. So once I've used this up, I really don't want to use any more face masks because I was using the Summer Fridays um, jet lag mask and I would put it on like when I was taking a bath and my skin would burn, especially around my nose and I realized how much hyaluronic acid was in it and so I gave it to my roommate. I'm kind of scared of face masks because they all have hyaluronic acid. This is not necessarily skincare but I really don't know where else to put it. This is the Briogeo Be Well Citrine Centered and Lavender and Chill. These were a collab with Kathleen Lights and Riojo. I really, really love the um, Citrine and Centered. Citrine is my birthstone and this smells amazing. It smells like vanilla. It's so good. I went through this one first and I'm kind of sad, but oh my god, it was so good. I don't think you can buy these anymore. I have one more. I think it's the Rose Quartz and Rose. These calm me really well. Like whenever I'm studying and I'm like freaking out about a test, I'll like put it on my wrists and on the back of my neck and just massage it in. And it could be a placebo effect, but that like excuse to massage like your neck, especially when you're stressed. And this is the Lactic Acid Alpha Arbutin Brightening Serum by Glow Skin Beauty. I just went through this last night. I must say, I have never seen such 
a, an overnight positive reaction healing my skin like I have with this. It's it's lactic acid, so if you don't know, like whenever you stretch and you get sore, what that buildup is that's making you sore is the lactic acid. So it's natural in the body. Hyaluronic acid is also natural in the body, but that doesn't necessarily mean you need external hyaluronic acid. Um, for some people, it works for them. For me, not necessarily. And for some people, this burns their skin. And for me, it heals my acne overnight. I would repurchase this for sure. I'm kind of sad that I already went through it. But I need to research lactic acid a little bit more before I go out and buy it myself. Because I got this in a boxy charm. I'm pretty sure. Okay, well, my tripod broke. So my camera cannot be sit to where it's angled. So now I'm on my phone. But this is my last product, so this is my prescription for Creology. So if you don't know, um, it's a subscription brand, but it's backed by a dermatologist. And I go to a dermatologist in person. And I recently just got on spironolactone. And before I went and saw her again in person because of the pandemic, I decided to get on Creology just for like maintenance in the time being because I was I just gotten off of Accutane, but I noticed some like little bumps pumping popping up so I just wanted to do it for maintenance and I showed her the ingredients and she really likes it so she told me to keep using it so I am this is my old prescription this is the um, niacinamide 4% uh, clindamycin 1% azaleic acid 4% applied to face nightly I kind of do it twice a day and then this is just the same thing, but a little bit stronger. The largest ingredient is azaleic acid, 10%, clindamycin, 1%, and niaminicide, 4%, apply nightly. I uh, alternated this with my lactic acid that I just mentioned. I do think Curology is good for maintenance, and I think that it works for me and what I need, and I have seen positive results, but I don't think it's the end-all be-all. To be honest, um, especially if you have severe acne, like before I went on Accutane, because I had a huge breakout in June 2018. In July, I went on Curology, but then I had to quit in September, no, no, November 2018, because I was starting Accutane. It's not suggested for you to use any topicals whenever you're on Accutane because your skin is so dry. So that's why I stopped. But I do really think that they're doing great things and I think it's a very accessible way for people who cannot go to the dermatologist to get something and topicals from the dermatologist are very expensive so I understand the appeal of this I would just make sure that your dermatologist likes it for me my dermatologist said that she likes my formula so that's why I'm using it but please make sure that you are using ingredients that are recommended for acne because it's a very serious issue it's not just cosmetic it's your skin it's your largest organ so please make sure that anything that you're using for acne or whatever like problem that you're experiencing please make sure you talk to a doctor a dermatologist so you can get the right formula for you and that is all from me i'm gonna go edit this video instead of doing homework but yeah i really enjoyed talking about all of these apparently i'm very opinionated on skincare so if you enjoy this make sure to like it subscribe leave a comment and yeah this is me i'm gracie and thank you for watching bye but, but baby got back me Okay, if you're, I'm just being annoying at this point. You're, if you're too young to know that, then I'm sorry, you missed out.